Well, I'll just get started. Um, just a brief introduction. I'm going to talk myself a little bit more in my presentation. My name is Zach Beaver. I am a graduate of 2013 from St. John's. Um, my business partner, who I'll be bringing on in a second, is a graduate from 2004, I believe. Um, he is in, living in South Carolina now, so he would not be able to be here, but uh, as I'm talking about technologies to kind of take advantage and make the most of your global life, career, and education, I think it's appropriate to bring him on since he is working remotely. <coughs> Give me a minute here, Ross. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Okay, so we're gonna get started here with the presentation. When we get down to your part, I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, so I'm, my name is Zach Beaver, I'm with Bright Global Futures. Um, with our company, we engage, we connect, we empower global citizens to solve problems. Um, some of my professors are actually here in this class who've kind of got me down this path, this global lifestyle. Um, I'm not gonna talk a little bit more. Of, so like I said, my topic today is using technology to make the most of your global life, career, and education. And right now we're using Microsoft Teams to collaborate on this presentation. We've got Ross sitting down here in the bottom corner. Um, and why this is important is St. John's and St. Ben's, you've got over 60% of your student body that studies abroad. Um, pulled that right from the uh, admissions site. And 5% uh, of the student population are international students. So, and the rest of the students obviously are very closely involved with these students who either study abroad or from abroad. So, Everyone here on campus has a global lifestyle in some, some way, whether they're staying here on campus, working with those international students or those domestic students who have had those international experiences, whether you're teaching them um, or you're just kind of helping them on their, on their journey. Um, and then kind of one more statistic we have here is 30% of the US workers currently work as freelancers. Um, that number is estimated to grow by 50% um, by 2020. So that's why it's important to understand how to use certain technologies. We use Microsoft Office, um, what is it called, uh, Collaborative Cloud now, Ross? Oh, I think I lost it. I'm not sure what happened there with the volume, but they're, they're using it more of like a creative, oh. Cloud, sorry, Cloud Productivity Tools. Yeah, so that's kind of Microsoft's using it more as a Cloud Productivity Tool um, network. Um, so research by Global Workforce, just kind of some more statistics here of kind of the remote um, individual, how much money they save in gas um, per year, um, greenhouse gases, oil, and um, driving. So how can digital technologies improve the global life experience? Um, and kind of more about, again, kind of back to what we do is our purpose is to engage, connect, and empower people to solve problems. Um, kind of our niche is the global families, schools, and organizations. And then with that, the three uniques that we're based off of is our cloud technology, our cloud, um, the e-training, our dashboard and tools, which we'll talk about, um, coaching, mentoring, consulting, and our adventures, which are experience, internships, and events. And we do that all in our proven process, the GPSX global problem solving platform, which is a tool that we offer for free. So a little bit more about me. Um, I am the Outreach and Recruitment Manager. I graduated St. John's in 2013. Um, that's my, my mom, my dad, my sister, my dog. Um, what I want from my journey is I want to help others thrive on their own journey. Um, rather than just kind of surviving and make it by day by day, I want them to make the most of what they, what they can get from it. And just some places I've lived, Minneapolis, um, Irvine, Bay Bay, Chongqing, and Calcutta, India. So actually, Joe Rogers is the reason I was back in, uh, or I went to study abroad in China. Um, talked to me back in high school, actually, when I was at the prep school. And we've got here Ross. Go ahead and Ross, introduce yourself. Okay, hello, Collegeville. <laughs> My name is Ross Anderson, class of 2003, St. John's and I'm the founder of Bright Global Futures. Although I can't be with you in person at St. John's University right now, you may or may not find it as a coincidence that I happen to be calling you from St. John's Island in South Carolina. 
So, so we're, we're currently, we're actually in our record breaking fourth day of 100 degree weather and we're desperately needing rain with none forecast in sight. And I was wondering, maybe you guys could push some of that cold and rainy weather that you've had in our direction. Um, so my wife, Katie, and I moved with our family, including three kids under the age of six years here in January. We were hoping to avoid a cold winter success. And following our dreams of living as a family near beaches and palm trees. And to experience a totally different culture together as a family. And our move is not unlike the experience so many others have had of moving away from home. And in so many ways, it reminds me of challenges and opportunities I faced during my experience of moving to China as an expatriate manager from 2007 to 2012 to establish our family's business operations there. We own a company called uh, Midwest Rubber and set up a company in Shanghai. So for a successful move, we needed to learn the laws, adapt to a new culture, even adjust to the food and the weather. We also needed to make new local friends and business connections. We needed to maintain relationships with family, friends, and businesses, and, and nurture all the relationships that I've made in Minnesota and around the world. So that brings me to the core question we are utilizing technology to help us answer and how we got the idea for Bright Global Futures. And that question is, how can we make the process of going global better for everyone involved in the process? Some of the answer you'll see, as Zach has mentioned, is that we have a proven process of globally proven tools and methods for people and organizations not to just survive on their journey, but to thrive. And as you'll see from the rest of Zach's presentation, some of those tools, we can call them productivity tools, are already available to you and your students today on your current systems that could greatly enhance the global education experience for your entire student body. So if they are more integrated into the individual experiences of study abroad and part of the global education curriculum. So thanks for having us here today to share our learning about global education technology and learning from you all today. And although you can see here that presenting by video call can work well, we always preach to use the best tool for the job at hand. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Zach and he can continue the presentation in person. So thanks and enjoy your well-deserved spring and summer weather. Thank you, Ross. I'm gonna kick you offline now just so it's, uh, connection's a little more stable, okay? See ya, all right, thanks, good luck. So let me go back to the presentation. So as we talked about, we use global tools, we use a platform, we use Office 365, which I believe you guys still use on campus, correct? Um, this presentation is actually made on Microsoft Sway, which is offered with NetSuite. A um, little bit different than PowerPoint, but it gives you an online link where anybody can view this anywhere in the world, including China, where Google is blocked, which is why we use Microsoft over the Google platform for our company. Um, so just to talk a little bit about the GPSX, the Global Problem Solving Platform. Again, our goal is to have a free platform for anyone in the world to be able to use to manage their global lifestyle. Um, it's still in development. We've got phase one pretty ironed out. Um, but it's, it's, we've discovered that the, um, you know, there's, no, there's no global framework to kind of help people on this global journey, as Ross had mentioned. Um, there's a lot of these resources that already exist, mentors, um, individuals who've already had these experiences that you can reach out to. But a lot of people don't know how to do that or how, when they actually do meet these people, what kind of questions to ask. Um, so what we kind of put this together is to create kind of a common language to work with these different stakeholders together to make the most of that experience. Um, and we do that in the three-phase three, day, three phase process. One is to discover where you understand your vision for your future. Um, you make kind of connections um, to understand how to, how to um, communicate that vision. And then you have an adventure where you go out, you, uh, you kind of, you, you, with those new connections that you have, you talk about your vision and kind of do a fun activity that kind of explain, that's kind of like, uh, your vision. So like uh, we've had students who've done um, like 
jumping out of an airplane and going parachuting. Ah. Um, so like going down the uh, sled up in Duluth to kind of see the whole picture. Um, then we've got Connect, where now you're learning how to use a tool, A3 tool, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, to solve that problem. Um, and then once you understand kind of more about what the problem is, you start making more connections based off of that and then have another adventure. And then you lead a group of individuals to solve a sponsored project. Um, so I'm gonna kind of move on. We've got, so the cloud, the coach, and the adventure kind of all fits in there. So the e-training itself is actually kind of a free platform that we, like I said, we put together where someone can kind of pull up just like this, a sway, they can go through and kind of navigate it on their own. Um, and then add the additions to the cloud, the coach, and ventures as needed. So again, my goal today is to talk about the technologies themselves, not the platform. Um, but with that, we, we have kind of put together our, we call it the Life and Career Dashboard. Um, it's a one-page tool that helps people understand who they are and what they want from their future. So you're talking about your core values, um, your purpose, um, your trusted advisors, your 10-year plan, your three-year plan, and your one-year goals. And once you understand how to do this, then you can start going to those stakeholders in your life instead of having everyone kind of tell you what you need to do, uh, especially on the student side, your parents telling you you need to study this in school or you need to do this. Now you understand what you want to do and what you need to do, and then you can communicate that more effectively with your stakeholders. Um, and then you've got your 90-day goals and then some of the issues that are um, holding you back from those goals. And this is that A3 problem solving tool um, to kind of talk about this, your problem statement, the scope, the objectives, um, what the future situation looks like and the current situation looks like, and the implementation plan and those measurables that kind of put that together um, to work with your, your stakeholders to kind of get what you want from your global journey. So those tools now, again, the, the digital, the technology side of it, we use Office 365. Um, you guys have that available to the students, people who don't like to use Office 365, there's a lot of other tools out there that are free that people can use. Um, so for example, um, like I said, the reason we use it is it is a proven tool. Many companies out there end up using it too. Um, global companies, it works <coughs> everywhere in the world. Um, like I said, unlike Google, where if you go to China, you're not gonna get anything. Um, so yeah, it's cloud-based, it's got some of the top you know, best security um, out of any platform. It works smartphones, computers, tablets, anywhere in the world. One of those tools we use is Teams. It's a great way to kind of collaborate on those uh, with your stakeholders. So for example, if you're a student who's studying abroad, um, maybe you use Skype, right? Or Google Hangouts or FaceTime, right? So it doesn't really matter exactly what tools we use. Again, we use Office. Um, but it's a great way to kind of communicate with those stakeholders, let them know what's going on in your life, what, what you're working on, what, uh, you know, how you're going about solving those problems those that you understand that are holding you back from your vision. Um, and then also with Teams, you have the ability to kind of create chats and stuff too. So it's very, very similar there. Um, one of the other tools, Sway, this is the one that, again, this presentation is based off of, um, mobile and um, computer-based. Uh, it's just basically just a website that you go to, you can scroll through on your phone. I can send this out, this presentation out later because it actually has a link to our free um, platform too to play around with. Um, but it, you know, it works on a phone, it works on a tablet. It's very, it's very user friendly too. Um, unlike PowerPoint, um, or I mean you could use PowerPoint, you use a PDF, you can use Google, um, you know, Google Slides. Um, what doesn't matter again what that platform is, but is your, and a kind of on a global, a global citizen kind of on a global journey, you have these different tools that you can use to kind of communicate some of those, some of the things that you're working on, whether it's um, like kind of a blog site, right? To uh, talk about your adventure to, to Rome in Italy, or you're talking about your um, past weekend camping up in the North, uh, the, you know, North Shore. Um, something that you can share back with your friends, your families, those stakeholders too. Um, and then that actually has a link to the e-training, the, no, the phase 1.1. Um, planner. A lot of people have just actual physical planners. 
Um, I have, but I've almost never used it. <laughs> um, I know most phones nowadays have little task lists. Um, you end up throwing a few tasks on there and then you end up kind of forgetting to manage it. Um, Planner is the tool we use um, since it's built into your office. Um, and then all of the, uh, the stakeholders will have the ability to see that through the Office 365 platform. Um, but again, whether it's you know Google Tasks or you know just the one that's built into the iPhone or you know whatever you're using it, I, Evernote even probably has something like that too. Um, whatever you're using, it's it's most of us end up using it for a few days and then kind of stray away from that. But it's a great way to kind of put your your 90 day goals, your your yearly goals in a kind of in, a, in an area to kind of actually check off and actually get done rather than just um, you know, throwing on your, your shopping list or um, whatever you want to throw on there. But it's kind of, we bring all these kind of together within, within SharePoint. Um, that's kind of one thing that I think makes Office 365 a little bit more, um, more of a benefit to it because this is kind of where all those, those stakeholders that I mentioned earlier kind of come together um, to help that individual on that global journey. And here's what, kind of an example of what we have. We've put together a, we call it a student dashboard. So it's kind of almost like a Facebook site, um, but it's full of about five or six people who actually really care about you. Um, so this is one of our one of the individuals who went through our program um, named Yen Kong. He's actually a Johnny. Um, graduated, I think, two years ago um, from China with a background in uh, mathematical computations. Um, so he's actually going to help us with a little bit of the development of this too. But again, I, we use it kind of as a way for stakeholders to stay engaged. Um, so he's got his kind of a little information about him, his information about badminton, music, academic progress, and cultural development. You scroll down a little further on the page, and this is where he creates his updates. Again, just like kind of like a Facebook post. So I mean, whether you, I like SharePoint because it kind of combines all those other tools together with this. Um, but again, someone could just make a Facebook group or, you know, using other, other types of platforms too. So for example, he had a phone conversation with a professor at the University of Kansas for the PhD program. He had posted it here, talked about it, shared it with his family and his other key advisors. Um, so it'd be people on our team, it was people, um, I guess his parents, one of his other professors here at St. John's. Um, and then he's kind of got some other posts um, throughout here. So talking about his intercultural effectiveness um, we had him take a test to kind of figure out where he is, relates to um, his intercultural uh, or ability to work with people from different cultures. Um, some other presentations, one about direct mail. So he just kind of talked a little bit about his experience with that. His purpose statement, what his goal is. Um, so as we talked about earlier on that, uh, that one page document, the LCD, his goal is to gain acceptance to a highly ranked graduate program and balance gaining a work experience in the process. So now all of his stakeholders know exactly what he's trying to do. Um, and then kind of a growth plan built on what he, or how he's going to try and achieve that. And then kind of some uh, events that he has coming up that are related to his goal. Um, when I took a screenshot, there was nothing on there but generally be like career fairs or coffee meetings with individuals in the, within his field. Um, and then we've got his key advisors and key stakeholders listed here on the side. So key stakeholders would be his, um, one of his employers, um, my company, his parents, and then his advisors are you know, his professor, um, one of his friends at Ameriprise, badminton friends, and then some other friends from St. John's. And then his task list would be right here, so stakeholders can actually see what his tasks are, what he's getting completed, um, and then some of the issues that he's facing right now. So, um, showing his parents he wants financial independence. You know, spring versus fall semester of grad school, um, low intercultural effectiveness or cultural quotient, and communicating with his mother and father, which are fake questions or which are problems a lot of the international students do face here on campus too. And then the rest of his team kind of are all listed here. So kind of, a, I guess, almost like a friends list. So, and then the documents that he has kind of accumulated throughout the, uh, going through the program. So again, using these different technologies, it helps people on a global lifestyle kind of manage their, um, 
the people in their life so people know, oh, sorry, no one more, one note um, to kind of take notes along his journey. And we use it um, for our week, we, every week we have a meeting with him for about an hour and we just kind of track the meeting notes in that too so he can kind of go back and look at them. But uh, like I said, I mean, it doesn't matter what the tools are. There's a lot of these great tools out there that are free. So whether they're, I mean, the students on campus have access to, I'm assuming all of these tools um, with Office. Um, and because it's a great platform that kind of unified on SharePoint, it gives that ability for all the, uh, you know, their, maybe their advisor to kind of get involved and um, won't, you know, make some of their professors that they uh, have gotten a really close relationship with or their, their friends or classmates um, or even some, for the national students, maybe the domestic students, so the domestic students, maybe some international friends. Um, but outside of that, I mean, if they don't have, want to use this or the student, people don't want to use a platform like this, you can use Facebook in a similar way. Similar, similar way. You can use any um, task tool. You can use any type of notebook tool. I mean, um, there's so many technologies out there that people have access to, um, and they use them for all different sorts of ways, but you can actually use them to your advantage um, while on that global lifestyle. So I think that's all I have. What kind of questions do you have? Nobody? So, okay. so Zach, you know, I remember you as the high schooler from St. John's Prep. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in the first year of college, you have, you know, you, you are the person, you know, you, you are the, I'm the, uh, Mr. Know It All, right? <laughs> because I learned all the all the books up to like third year Chinese in mm -hmm. college. Um, would you tell us a little bit about your kind of your Mandarin route? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of helps understand a little bit more about the global lifestyle. So I started out at St. John's Prep back in two thousand six, um, and coming from you know east east side of the cities, Oakdale, Minnesota, um, from a school that had probably way more students than it should have. Um, my parents wanted to kind of give me more of that one-on-one, -on -one, or not, I guess, kind of that cl the smaller classroom setting, so they sent me up to St. John's, and um, whether or not I really wanted to go, they thought it was the best decision for me. So again, this kind of fits in with some of what we're, uh, kind of, our, our goal for our company to kind of help people who are, you know, they, they have to go places whether or not they want to, so immigrants, international students, domestic students whose parents say you need to study abroad who really don't want to go abroad. Um, so a lot of this is based on our own experiences that we put together. But yeah, so I ended up going to St. John's, had the opportunity to study Spanish, German, or Chinese. And um, Spanish is a great language, especially working and living in the United States. Um, I really wanted to study German because they had a study abroad program to live in Austria for a year, and I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Um, my dad convinced me that it's a kind of a dying business language and he's like, why not try Chinese? You don't like it, you can switch. So of course I was like, well, I don't have to commit to anything. I'm what, 13, 14 years old? Um, sounds like a great idea. So I took Chinese, studied it for two years, then got a full ride scholarship to study in Beijing in 2008. Anybody remember what happened in Beijing in 2008? Olympics. So I got to spend the summer in uh, Beijing during the Olympics and just fell in love with the culture. It's just so different, especially moving from, you know, living in central Minnesota to, you know, a city of over what, 20 million people, um, probably even more because of the Olympics. Um, then I came back and with that experience, my whole world was kind of changed, um, seeing things in a completely different light. Um, and obviously just falling in love with languages more, decided to kind of study a little bit more from the cl my classmates. Um, eventually started taking classes at the university because I outgrew the classes at St. John's Prep. Um, took some classes with Sophia, Dr. Bohr, um, and then as I was graduating from St. John's Prep School, looking around for different, uh, different universities, uh, Dr. Bohr had told me that if I was thinking about looking anywhere else that I uh, just talk to him and he'll make sure I uh, end up here. So, <laughs> here I am <laughs> at St. John's and uh, took some classes with Dr. Brash. Um, got in contact with Joe Rogers back there and he got me to go uh, study abroad in China my sophomore year. And then uh, I talked to him again what, about two years later and said, hey, Joe, I'm looking at uh, India or Japan. He goes, go to India. <laughs> and I ended up studying abroad in India and 
graduated a year early and uh, went to Concordia, Irvine and did my master's in international studies and Chinese business, which sent me back to China to study craft beer. So I did a master's thesis on craft beer in Shanghai. <laughs> Funny as I say, the more I study, the less I remember. Uh, <laughs> then ended up back here working for United Healthcare as a Mandarin Chinese interpreter for about a year. Jumped around United Healthcare a little bit and then ended up in a retail supply company. And then uh, at a Johnny Tommy game at Target Field, I ran across Ross again um, after connecting with them originally in 2011. I think Joe had probably connected me with him. Um, he, uh, Ross had uh, asked me to join him on his team and kind of see where this went. And then uh, about six months later, I quit my job and started doing this full time. And now here I am. So that's kind of my background with the Chinese and international experience. Both through that, I learned a lot and uh, made a lot of mistakes. But uh, that's kind of put that my heart and my soul kind of into what we put together here. Any other questions? What does it mean to live a global lifestyle? It kind of means something different for everybody, I, I guess. The way that, for me, it just means kind of working with people from diverse backgrounds. Um, so whether, you're, again, you're here on campus, and for, or even in central Minnesota, you've never been out, outside of the state, um, but you're, you're living around a large Somali population, right? Um, the goal of Bright Global Futures, we, we say we don't try to, we're not building a wall, but we're also not really tearing it down. Because people are going to build walls and people are going to tear them down nonetheless. Our goal is to just take, make the most of that experience um, living with people who are diverse. Um, and kind of, so it's a win-win situation for everybody. So that's, so for, to answer your question though, global lifestyle, um, for me is just kind of, Again, making that most of that uh, experience working with people from all over the world or people who have had experiences from all over the world because with globalization and the, the growing population in this world that uh, I don't think you'll find anybody who really hasn't had some kind of global experience. Well, if there's no more questions, I will take the liberty um, to give a round of applause to a very special gentleman in this room today. Joe Rogers. He is the person that transformed so many students' lives. <laughs> well, I, I know Zach. I don't know if I know anybody else. But <laughs> I will claim him as a one. <laughs> Zach, I have one, one further question, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. What would you, what's the one way uh, that you see people striving for this kind of global, more connected life? where they're uh, falling short in a way, or something that you think, hey, they're not reaching their potential in that regard? What is that one barrier, or the missing resource, or the missing approach that, that you find that you're able to help them with? Or? Getting outside of your comfort zone. That's the one that everyone struggles with. Because if you look back, a lot of, when a lot of the international students we work with, their struggle is their English. Their struggle is making new friends. Their struggle is understanding how to deal with the new culture. And you kind of go back, why, why, why? It's because they're afraid to leave their dorm. They're afraid to go out there and make those friends. And that's the same even when I studied abroad. A lot of my classmates, they wanted to make these connections. They wanted to go out and meet people. They wanted to go out and do these things. But they just didn't know how. And they were just kind of, again, a little afraid to go out and do it unless someone either gave them a push or held their hand. So that's kind of what we do is we kind of help push them to get out of their comfort zone. So does the digital piece help or hurt? I think the digital piece helps because I think a lot of people, one, because it helps you stay connected with those people that are back home, those people around the world, um, those people that you've built those relationships with um, that can also help kind of push you to that next level. Thanks. Thank you.